Good morning to everyone. We are starting the second hearing during the 180 period of session. The name of this uh, hearing is Memory, Truth and Justice in Bolivia, the work of the Truth Commission. This hearing was requested by the Plataforma Luchadores Sociales Sobrevivientes de las Dictaduras, Organización de Víctimas de Dictadura Kilómetro Cero, Mujeres Libertad. As you know, this hearing have an estimated uh, time, so the civil society organizations will have 20 minutes. On the screen, you will see a clock that will register the time so that you can all have time to speak. Afterwards, the state will have 20 minutes. Afterwards, the commissioners that are here with me today, the second vice president, Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, and Raporteur from Bolivia, Commissioner Arasamana Arasamana, who is the Rapporteur on the Rights of Children, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, who is also Rapporteur for the Rights of Human Rights Defenders, and also the Commission, before giving the floor to civil society organizations and the state, we'll have uh, 20 minutes to ask questions, make comments, and afterwards, I will give the floor for 12 minutes to the civil society and 12 minutes to the state so that we can close the meeting. As I have mentioned, we have a clock that is going to register the time. As you can see, we are using captions. I cannot see them now. So that everyone can keep crap, uh, track of the meeting. And at the same time, the hearing is being broadcasted on our Facebook and Twitter uh, sites. I will now give the floor. Uh, before that, I want to thank the staff of the secretary, uh, executive secretariat. And if you have uh, to use interpretation, it is available. I will now give the floor to the civil society representatives for 20 minutes. And please keep track of time. Sometimes the timer stops, but there are persons from the staff that are also keeping track of time. Thank you. I will now give the floor to you. Please do not open your microphones if you want to speak. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Commission and the Executive Secretariat. Good morning. My name is Franco Alvarrocin. I am a lawyer of the Association of Victims of the Dictatorship in Bolivia. I am together with representatives of the uh, different organizations, Kilometro Cero, Mujeres Libertad, Plataforma de Luchadores Sociales y Sobrevivientes, and other um persons uh, who were victims are, are here present as you know the truth commission was created in 2017 to uh, clarify the um acts of serious uh, violations during the dictatorship that took place from 1964 to 1982 the organizations represent most victims of the dictatorship and I'm going to express their opinion about the work carried out by the commission and we'll also provide updated information about the situation of the victims and the permanent uh, strike um, actions in order to look for a comprehensive reparation. Madam President, I will now give the floor to the distinguished organizations that are here present. I will now give the floor to Ms. Victoria Lopez. Good morning. Thank you, authorities of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Thank you for granting us this hearing to let you know about the difficult situation we are going through, the survivors of dictatorships in Bolivia. I am Victoria Lopez, General Secretary of the Plataforma de Luchadores Sociales y Sobrevivientes of the Dictatorship. And 
I want to mention the precedents. Nine years ago, the survivors of the dictatorship started uh, a strike, a vigil, before the Ministry of Justice, uh, asking the uh, government to establish a commission, a truth commission, fulfilling the comply, complying with the law in order to achieve uh, reparation for political victims. The disclassification of the dictatorship archives that are in the hands of the armed forces and also fulfillment of law 24, 2640. Also the murder of the president of the platform, survivors of the dictatorships during these nine years in the tents, we suffer different um, attempts, destruction of the tents, attacks to the Secretary General, Victoria Lopez, who put her danger in life, according to the experts report, February, 2014. The tents were burned, which caused the loss of, of documentation and material loss and damaged um, and put in danger the lives of the persons sleeping in the tents. October 2019, brutal aggression to our president by miners and peasants that were carrying out a strike to support the government. And due to the attack he died after a lot of grief the case was opened with number 1804 1904 and the investigation so far has not been fulfilled and the actions were not investigated we make emphasis that the president of the platform has always guided the struggle to defend human rights and democracy. There is no justice, and we want justice. Second point, sorry, point three, process of reparation. The compensation law um, that favors dictatorship victims and the supreme decree A complement the law that was passed in February 2014. In March 2004, he handed that law in order to compensate those persons who suffer uh, attacks, but in unconstitutional government officials that violated human rights and guarantees and enshrined in the constitution and civil and political rights and it establishes free medical attention, economic compensation, and other measures as well in order to compensate violent, uh, victims of political violence. The Commission of Human Rights of the Chamber of, of the Congress Chamber, and this law was not fulfilled the it was impossible to carry out with this because of the deadlines that were established passports or original documents were not found the law that was passed in july 2009 by president evo morales demands the compensation for the victims of political violence creates the technical uh, committee that ha doesn't have institutional representation and they are under the authority of the ministry of justice to continue with the classification process applying the norms established by the law different dispositions and decrees that allow the classification and qualification of the archives. Also, the law passed in April 2012 by Evo Morales, Article 1, incorporates the last part of Article 7 
the following tax, the minimal amount for all the compensations for the acts will be um, e will equal 30 days of compensation and modifies Article 16 of the law and authorizes the Ministry of Economy to assign um, state resources 3 million as an only payment by the Treasury that corresponds to 20% of the institutional compensation to the victims of political violence in Bolivia. Decree 11, 12, signed by President Evo Morales regarding Article C 7 of the law, more than a thousand beneficiaries were mentioned there. 6,000 victims were identified and establishes an economic compensation up to 48,000. That is a payment of 20%, and this modifies the uh, what was established by the law as compensation to compensate the victims of political victims. Nora Quisvera had a legislative initiative, a victim, and this was presented on April 2019, this bill, the comprehensive compensation to political victims now this bill has been archived. Now we want to conclude by saying that the law was not complied with. There were two modifications made with no consensus. They were asking for requirements that were impossible to present due to very strict deadlines, and they did not take into account the compensation established by this law. In several of the files that Amnesty International has gone over, in which victims were claiming uh, they were victims of torture and violence, and they were not taken into account because they couldn't establish the exact date in which they were tortured. They were very strict in their requirements in, what, in order to disqualify most of the testimonies. Taking this into account, it is urgent to end impunity to call to in order to punish the um, violent actions that took place during the dictatorship in Bolivia. Thus, we ask you to request the authorities of the state of Bolivia and respond to the demand of the victims who are asking for memory, truth, and justice, compensation, and non-repetition guarantees, taking into account that more than 50 um, comrades have died due to consequences related to the uh, torture and due to the pandemic as well. I'm sorry, but it is very hard to speak when we see that everyone here is dying. It's very hard to continue like this. My name is Edward Ramos Andrade, and I want to greet all members of the commission. As president of the Truth Commission, we need to acknowledge the work carried out by the state, but this has not been completed. First of all, there is a lack of normative provision, such as composition of the commission. According to the law, the members should be elected, taking into account their expertise, the ethical um, values, and the impartiality. This is very important for the members of the Truth Commission, but their professional ethical capacity and impartiality is very difficult to um, grasp due to their political affiliations. The president 
of the commission was personal advisor of President Morales. And also one of the members was ambassador of that government. And the opinion of the members of the commission support Morales government. So the Truth Commission uses the expression coup d'etat, which expresses a political partisan opinion that is against our citizenship. The institutional instability also has to be taken into account. The decrease 2040 and other decrees create instability within the Truth Commission. For example, a decentralized uh, public ministry or the fact that the executive secretary of the commission is elected, appointed by the Ministry of Justice or the president of the state. Secondly, there are irregularities regarding the work carried out by the commission, use of personal data without the consent of the victims. Between 2006 and 2012, there were files of victims of the dictatorship and these were prepared by unqualified staff. This caused several conflicts with the following um, governments which led us to um, place a tent in the uh, square at the capital of the, in La Paz. Thus, the conclusions of the commission contradict the law. Case four, hearings with the victims. Victims organizations were not summoned to provide specific information regarding the um, work of the commission and they did not gather relevant information and they did not comply with the law. Number five, claims filed by key activists. The final report of the Truth Commission points out that in May 2019, there were at least 10 researchers and also the person in charge of archives and documentation. And this led uh, to the fact that this commission did not have any researchers or persons in charge of gathering documents. In the process of selecting candidates, Bolivian was paralyzed due to the results of the election in 2009. Page 184 of the last report of the commission points out that the commission of instability of the truth commission in September 2019 no contract was uh, renewed in the commission. All the staff work at NRM while we were waiting for the arms forces to send the necessary documents. The commission was expanded twice in an extraordinary way. For, according to different decrees, due to a need uh, that was due to, um, due to the context, but this was unjustified. The law led the Truth Commission to uh, consult experts, but the last report public by the commission does not mention these advisors but it does not mention any medical experts in that report. Also, they did not fulfill the um, object of investigation or research of the commission, which was to clarify murders, forced disappearances, tortures, arbitrary detentions, sexual violence, which are serious violation of human rights due to ideological and political reasons since 1964 to 1982. But on page 18 of the final report of the commission says that the aim of the research carried out by the commission is 
to investigate internal and external causes that led to the dictatorship and viol violation of human rights. The content of the final report of the Truth Commission prioritized an ideological reason as a dogma, the state purpose is systematized uh, in order to reach the truth about the dictatorship. And we see that no great effort was made, no important research was carried out. They only gathered certain documents about the uh, dictatorship. Also, the, last, the final report includes um, isolated photographs that do not belong to the period of dictatorship. According to the law, the Truth Commission should provide information to all private and public institutions regarding classified information. The law determined that these archives should be disclassified but in the final report, conclusion one, they state that the Truth Commission to conclude the report faced difficulties and limitations due to the limitations of the law, the time elapsed since the actions took place after 18 years of dictatorships, lack of access to information and uh, unwillingness of the armed forces to access classified documents. This is evidence of our claim, our demand, which is just as the Truth Commission's work is not sufficient and nor is its final report. This report was published and it has not been incorporated to an institutional uh, state website. Only the physical document that has 14,000 pages can be accessed in the library of the parliament. Only 50 copies were printed and it's very hard to access it. Also, identification of the victims. The lists of exiled Bolivians that were silenced, were tortured, women, victims of violence, in the final report, there are only lists. There is no systematization. General conclusions. The leaders of the Bolivian state have made specific suspensions and are responsible of keeping the impunity of dictators and oppressors. The parliament has passed decrees without previous consent the technical committees and legislators. I will ask you if you could conclude or you can conclude in the next uh, 12 minutes. To conclude, the Truth Commission has improvised in the results and the victims of the dictatorship are still suffering due to their work. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Barracin. No, no, we have just a request, a pending request um, from the uh, Society of Bolivia and the Victims of the Dictatorship that has to do with an in loco visit by the commission. Yes, you will also have another 12 minutes afterwards, or we can discount it from your 12 minutes. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, it'll be best for me to express this during those other 12 minutes. Okay, then. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state. Thank you very much. Distinguished commissioners, Antonio Rejola, Flavia Plu. Esmeralda Rosemena, Joel Hernandez, representatives 
of the um, NGOs that are here as, as representatives of the victims of the dictatorship. The Bolivian state would like to greet you all and manifest the honor of the uh, Bolivian state to attend these spaces of democratic debate requested by the family of the martyrs of our democracy between 1964 and 1982. My name is Janet Bustillos. I am the general director for human rights and the environment of the public prosecution. I am joined by Jimena Navarro, who heads the uh, cases unit and the Committee for Human Rights of the Public Prosecution. Commissioners, as you all know, within the framework of the doctrine of national security materialized in the Condor Plan in Latin America between 1964 and 1982, Bolivia went through a stage of military dictatorships who took the power through coup that that and that uh, systematically violated human rights. In 1976, the um, Bolivian Central of Workers and the Association of the Martyrs and those who were detained and the Catholic Church published a review of the dictatorship. After that, the first government attempt to recognize these facts was reflected in the constitution of the National Commission for the Investigation of Forced Disappearances through an executive order in 1982. In 1985, there was the creation of the trial of, uh, for the responsibilities of President Garcia Mesa. After that, the state developed actions to clarify forced disappearances uh, in that terrible historical era. The work of the victims of their families was of the essence. Some of them are here today, as well as the um, decision of the Inter-American Court on the disappearance of Jose Carlos Ortiz in 2002. Now I will quote the most important state measures developed to um, re for reparations for the victims of that period. First of all, the ratification of the Inter-American Commission on Forced Disappearances through uh, a law in 1996 and the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons Against Forced Disappearances, which was ratified by law in 2008. Also, the presentation of the um, initial periodic report uh, on 2018. Then uh, compliance with international commitments, the incorporation of the crime of uh, forced disappearance to our criminal code and the constitutional incorporation of its banning after the new constitution of the state. Third, the implementation of actions on the issue of forced disappearances, the right to truth and justice in the public policies of the state in the national plans for actions in human rights, 2009, 2013, 2014, 2018, and the public policy for human rights, 2015, 2020. Fourth, the creation of the Interinstitutional Council for the Clarification of Forced Disappearances, CIDEF, through executive order, an executive order in 2003, which functioned up to 2016, and it was made up of institutions from the state and the civil society in order to um, investigate forced disappearances. First of all, the exhumation of bodies in the General Cemetery of La Paz, where 17 bodies were recovered. Five of them were identified and given back to their families. And then another three bodies in the La Madre Cemetery in Santa Cruz. Second, the georeferentiation of burial sites of disappeared persons in Teoponte and Mapiri. After that, eight bodies were recovered. Third, uh, archaeological research investigation and the creation of uh, systematization. Fifth, the um, National Commission for Reparations for Victims of um, Political Violence in 2004, and the Technical Commission for uh, Qualifications, which was created in 2009. Both of them were meant to investigate the requests presented by the victims of political violence during unconstitutional governments. 
over 6,000 files were received for their qualification. And in the end of the process, 683 beneficiaries um, received the reparations. Creation of the Commission for Truth after the fight of many social workers and uh, victims from the dictatorship in September 2015 as a citizen's initiative, the uh, Legislative Assembly received the bill for the creation of the Commission for Truth. So on December 16, 2016, the, the commission was created to investigate the murderers, forced disappearance, um, arbitrary detentions and sexual violence based on political and ideological reasons carried out in Bolivia between 1964 and October 10, 1982. This creation, which was fostered by the civil society organizations and consolidated by the state, has um, been totally legitimate and efficient and established in its regulations, its mandate regarding its function, object, reach, period of time, and uh, authorities. It was uh, made up of five members, and there was a moral recognition. I apologize. Uh, the members were exper seasoned uh, fighters for um, the cause, which contributed to the independence and impersonality of the uh, commission. It was led by Ms. Iglesias, who was an activist of the associations from families of disappearances, of disappeared, sorry. And also a former member of the uh, Central for Workers who has now passed away. First, the uh, commission depended on the Ministry for Justice. And after executive order, after an executive order in 2018, the commission became a public decentralized institution for public law, a legal entity, an autonomous entity, and um, among other virtues, the law for the creation of this commission included in Article 7 and 8, the declassification of military documents, physical or digital military or, pol or police documents, or whose access was restricted, apart from the access to the of the commission to all kinds of information. There was a duty to collaborate with the commission, so the state had an obligation to assist it. The regulation also established the confidentiality on the identity of whomever provides information and protect them against um, the uh, aggressions of others who might be affected by their reports. The Truth Commission worked between 2017 and December 20th, 1919, sorry, 2019. And there was um, a lot of work involved from the uh, victims associations. The Truth Commission used scientific methodology to build an official file on human rights violations that took place between 1964 and 18 and 1982. In that context, the state would like to acknowledge once again the work on, of the Truth Commission because it allowed to, um, to aid in the um, collective building of the uh, clarification of truth. And it was a space for the acknowledgement of the experiences of the victims. The final report and compliance with the recommendations, the Truth Commission presented its final report on March 2020 to the um, Ombudsperson and in March 2021 before the president. And a, a copy of the report was sent to the public prosecution of the state. And the originals are in the files of our Legislative Assembly. The report has 11 books and over uh, 1,000 boxes of information. Methodology and description of files, then uh, historical context, 
historical narrative of human rights violation, recommendations, then books five to 10 have annexes on um, lists of victims and their aggressors and 11 uh, pictures in the part of uh, recommendations. There are 50 general recommendations and 19 specific recommendations. The Truth Commission acknowledges that after some difficulties as the time that passed by, um, they managed to reconstruct the truth thanks to many testimonies. With regards to the recommendations of the commission, one of the priorities is to open or continue the investigations and trials on the facts and the declassification of military files. The report also includes a proposal for reparation measures for the victims. One of the most important ones is acknowledging the historic truth actions to keep memory alive and the creation of public policies for repetition and for, sorry, for the non-repetition of human rights violations. After the, pre the delivery of the final report, the Ministry for Justice through um, resolution on April 22nd, 2021, decided that the area for fundamental rights of the Ministry for Justice would be in charge of following up the recommendations of the Truth Commission. Uh, so far, this unit has identified the competent instances to um, monitor the compliance of these recommendations. It is also a pleasure to report that in the past few months, the Ministry for Justice has held several meetings with representatives of the platforms of uh, social fighters against impunity and for the historic memory of the Bolivian people. Several NGOs uh, and the National Union of those who are exiled, another organization are Coati and Asofam. The idea was to uh, take note of their demands. Also, the Public Prosecutor's Office and the Ministry for Justice, and now the Institution of Forensic Investigation and the Institute for the Prevention of Torture have been carrying out uh, technical meetings on forced disappearances in Bolivia on uh, in January and then again a couple of months ago. A working plan was developed about um, the removal of the statute of limitations on the uh, crime of forced disappearances. It has also started the continuity of several judicial processes and the uh, maintenance of these process so that they will have the um, will have enough uh, state uh, strengthening. Then a project for the digital digitalization of the commission's file has been presented aimed at promoting the exercise of the right to access information and to protect the historic memory of the country. So commissioners, in coherence with its previous actions, and especially because of the work of the Truth Commission and the Victims Association, the state would like to repeat its commitment to continue to work for truth, justice, and measures of non-repetition against the um, violations against human rights during the dictatorships also to uh, do everything as possible to comply with all the recommendations of the Truth Commission and the development of other institutional mechanisms. And thirdly, to warranty that the actions of truth, memory, justice, and reparation will be developed with the participation of the victims, their families, and the organizations they represent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is it all for the state? Yes. OK, thank you. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, the Rapporteur for Bolivia. 
Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to start once again greeting everyone in the civil society and the representatives of the state in Bolivia. Dr. Uh, Ma Madam Janet, once again, I would like to recognize the importance of this hearing to gather precise information about the issue of uh, memory, truth, and justice in Bolivia and the work of the Commission, of the Truth Commission. I have two questions. Both are for the state. One has to do with the access to information in the right to truth. According to the civil society, there, there has been some rejection in uh, the attempts to access truth because the uh, military files continue to be confidential. But Janet, Madam Janet, um, reported on the impact of executive order from 2018 about the issue of access to information. So I would like here a clarification about first, how I would like to have updated information about the access to information in Brazil. I remember that we, had, we held a public hearing on access to information in Bolivia two, uh, two periods ago, and it, there was a bill to ensure access to information. So I think this is a key issue here, not only the impact of the executive order, but is there a project to ensure within the framework of the rule of law access to information and what's the scope of this information in the military files my second question has to do with the right to justice because we also heard from the civil society about impunity and the lack of criminal investigations so i think this is a very important issue to be clarified i uh, wrote down the, about the uh, 1,683 beneficiaries, but I would like to know a bit more about the policy of comprehensive reparations to the victims of the dictatorship. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Piovesan. Commissioner Arosemena, would you like to ask any questions? Thank you, Commissioner and President. I would like to greet the representatives of the state. And I have a message of solidarity for the victims who are here with us in this hearing. And I would like to acknowledge the work of all the organizations that have been fighting for this cause for so many years. I would just like to know, um, to ask the state to give us an outlook on your assessment of the fact that uh, the, the nine years they spent living in the tents with this process of criminalization, of attacks, and as Victoria was saying in her intervention, many of them have been victims and many of them even passed away. So this concept of comprehensive reparation that implies the entire process of laws, of the Truth Commission, the entire uh, gathering of this information. How does it, this all count when it comes to translating this into the attention that, because there for the past nine years, a group of victims have been making this claim. They have been living in tents for nine years. So, I understand and I acknowledge 
uh, what you're saying about the information presented by the state, because it uh, shows that there has been work here, that there's a projection for actions. But when I hear from the victims and the organizations from the civil society, we see that today they feel that this demand for justice, for reparations, for compliance with the regulations is not there yet. And what they are asking for is for these reparations that had been foreseen on Rule 4640 has been distorted and there has been no satisfaction when it comes to actual reparation. So I would just like to know how the state sees this and how the civil society that has been fighting for this considers that and they should finally achieve that. That's all, Madam President, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Esmeralda. Commissioner Hernandez, do you have any questions? No, I do not have any questions, Madam President, but I want to take the opportunity to greet the representative of the civil society, the victims of the dictatorship have made their presentation in a very emotional way, asking for a comprehensive reparation. I also want to congratulate the state. I want to highlight the importance of the Truth Commission and the comprehensive reparation. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tanya Renault, is present here. Do you want to make any comments? Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon to everyone here today. I want to express my solidarity with the petitioners and, and I want to acknowledge the fact that you are here expressing your feelings, your cause. Thank you for this and your confidence. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Also, Secretary Monitoring Secretary is here, Maria Claudia Pulido. She's here as well. Regarding the questions asked by the country reporter, I want to express my solidarity with the dictatorship victims and thank you for your presentation. But there are some questions regarding the criticism made by the civil society, taking into account the information presented by the state that is in line with what Flavia said. For example, the dissemination of the um, report that has been presented, that is, there is a problem related with accessing um, armed forces files when working uh, a, to achieve justice. But one of the criticism made by the civil society is that the report as such has not been shared with the whole, um, with all the people in Bolivia. There are testimonies that are classified to protect the victims, but the report regarding patterns and the general responsibility of the state in connection with the violation of human rights is very important and should be shared with the uh, population as a whole. And I wanted to know more about that process regarding the process of sharing the report with the people in order to guarantee non-repetition. At the same time, I want to ask about the compensation to the victims and the reparation. I want to know if there is a comprehensive institutional plan for the reparation of the victims and what 
what was the participation of the victims in the preparation of that plan? I think that is also very important, taking into account the standards on the matter. And that was not clear because the information provided by the civil society uh, differs from the data provided by the state. So how this plan was developed, uh, whether it is a comprehensive plan, how uh, you work with the victims to develop it. I also share with Commissioner Esmeralda and Flavia the importance of investigating these criminal cases. And I want to ask the state if there are reinforced measures in order to progress in these cases connected with human rights violations that have already been determined in established in the report itself which is related with non-repetition guarantees and finally the state has informed about different measures that were taken in connection with the search and identification of disappeared persons in the context of the dictatorship but i also wanted to know if there is a formal mechanism to search and identify disappeared persons. That was not clear. Those are my questions. Thank you. I will now give the floor for 12 minutes to the civil society organizations and then 12 minutes to the state so they can provide the information we have requested. Thank you. With great respect to everyone, I am part as representative and founder of this assembly, Human Rights Assembly, knowing the ones that, that are part of this document about truth, the Truth Commission, to this assembly, myself, I have visited Mrs. Nila in the prisons in Bolivia, and I have not been consulted. And I have requested the Ministry of Justice to send me the report, and they have been sent it. So what else can I say? I have been supporting the persons who suffered during the dictatorship, the victims. And as founder of the assembly, I have not had the opportunity of speaking. I am sorry that Nila and the way in which they have recovered the government in these 20 years, the new state were given awards of participation at that time. And I have talked to Nila when Argentinians proclaim her recognizing her partner who disappeared, Rutilo, the Artes family, and so many persons I've met. I haven't received the opportunity of speaking, I haven't been given the opportunity. I respect Miss Janet, you're very young. I don't know if you know me, but I invite you to come to the assembly to ask for all this information. I am a witness, essential witness of that decade. And I could also tell you that I am an eyewitness of what has been happening in the last years. Thank you. I want to greet all the commissioners and my colleagues as well. I'm Carmen Murillo of the uh, movement Mujeres Libertad. As member of this organization, I want to mention the repression to women during the dictatorship. It was brutal. I have seen it, I have lived it. Our lives were in the hands of torturers. Our, we had lesions in our teeth, in our faces, even um, abortions. 
and also certain lessons in our soul. We don't know, we didn't know if we were going to survive. They pra practice sexual violence in each questioning. There were different kinds of injuries and do we also lost our families and also our freedom. We have problems with our husbands, our children, our work. While being locked and the stress caused different effects in our health. We had um, the injuries that could mark the rest of our lives. That they always said that woman was in jail. Do not mess up with her. It is hard to go back to society afterwards. Many kept as a great secret before their children, their husband, or their work what has had happened. Many were widows because their husbands were murdered, daughters without fathers, mothers without children. The book Libres, Testimonio de Mujeres, Testimonies by Women, the second part about revictimization, the ambus person didn't work enough before the estate. We don't know how to resort to. They only work with a political interest in mind instead of having no guarantee, no repetition guarantees, we have impunity. What happened during the government of Morales and Anis as well. We also face the instability of the state authorities. They constantly change. So they don't have time to get to know about our case and they do not have time to seek for solutions. And we have to start all over again. The person in charge of fundamental rights in this government has already been, has been changed three times already to confirm these statements and to find a solution to our problem. We request as soon as possible an in loco visit of the commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Madam President, I will now uh, answer some questions. I will now give the floor to representative of the victims. In connection with the information, it is important to mention that the Ministry of Justice has presented a project before the Legislative Assembly. This is has not progressed. Bolivia does not have a law to access information as many other countries. And these causes this leads to the fact that it has been impossible to gather information that is classified and is in the hands of the armed forces. The only possibility of getting this information from the armed forces was the Truth Commission. And unfortunately, you are mentioning this has not been possible the Truth Commission was the only one who could do this. The dissemination of publicity of the report was done with President Luis Arce, and the report is only can only be accessed in a physical format, and there is no policy to disseminate the report. I would like to mention some pending topics in connection with reparation to the victims. We have to bear in mind that there are pending demands presented by uh, organizations before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. For example, there is a request before the commission in, the, in 2004, 2014, and now we have to 
mention something regarding state instances for the search of disappeared persons. They are not active and there's no political will to reinforce the search of disappeared persons. There are initiatives decrease, but they are not active. And as the representative of the state has mentioned, if that exists, we are not aware of that. The human uh, rights action plans in connection with the dictatorship are unnecessary. And there are many cases related to forced disappearances. For example, of uh, Mr. Quiroga, a human rights defender, Pedro Gonzalez Garcia and Caldoes, who were murdered in Cochabamba in the context of the Condor operation. Although there are several instances, such as the uh, prosecutor's office or the ambassador person, there is something, uh, there's a duty that the state should uh, comply with, which is the search and identification of the remains. There are serious uh, violations of human rights. The massacres, the murders involve Bolivia are constant, regardless of the government. That's why, in spite of the fact that there is dialogue with the Ministry of Justice, we met more than 20 times with authorities with no results. So we request the Commission to prepare an in local visit so they can establish a date this year in order to verify the fulfillment, the compliance of these um, regulations. I would like to give the floor to Ms. Victoria. Just to remind you, you have two minutes left. Thank you. I would just like to say that in February 19th, Esmeralda visited us in Sucre. We talked to her and we also presented a letter addressed to you all uh, with our claims showing the pictures of the aggressions we suffered. And I would just like to emphasize that we are here now with another partner of us, Núñez Draguito, who has presented a call, who presented a, uh, a lawsuit at your institution since 2003, and there has been no reply. You are the only institution we can go to to ask for justice and reparation. There's no access to information because everything is closed. Everything is uh, is kept from us. And the Truth Commission has damaged the victims. It has presented our files of the six over 6,000 uh, of our 6,000 partners, Ms. Eva Copa, who is now the mayor of El Alto, was the president of the, of the Legislative Assembly. And she, after Edgar Ramirez, the president of the commission, handed in our files, she gave it to the file of the Legislative Assembly. Those files were prepared by us, with our own resources, with our evidence. We don't know the state they're in. We have asked for the devolution of those files. So um, distinguished authorities and partners, please, the civil society represented by us, the survivors of the dictatorships for so many years, since 1964, after the first coup d'etat, up to October 1982 in the final coup d'etat by General Garcia Messi. We're talking about 18 years of dictatorships. The state is unwilling to, to investigate. And this is not new. This has been going on for many years. That's why we've been fighting for nine years in our tents with, with colleagues from Sucre and other places. We are all older persons, but when we were young, we almost gave our lives and others gave their lives to defend our democracy and live in Bolivia in freedom with justice. But that is not happening. That is why we are asking you to carry out an in loco visit for you to confirm in situ the way we are living after so many years of fighting for justice and nothing has happened. Of course, there's dialogue. I am sorry, 
but it's been a minute and I must interrupt you. I apologize. Okay. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the state. Thank you very much, Madam President. It's there's many uh, topics that have been presented, many questions that have been asked in a general way. And as the uh, civil organizations have um, recognized the dialogue with the Ministry for Justice is the one that will lead to new policies to uh, reach the comprehensive reparations and find a new approach for the state to reach solutions with this group. Now, with regards to the access for information law, even though there is no law, as Mr. Franco Albarracín is saying, the political constitution of our state in its Article 21 states as a fundamental right, access to information. Bolivian citizens of Bolivians have the following rights to access information, to interpret it, analyze it, and communicate freely in an individual or collective manner. Now, this does not need further regulations because it's a right of all the citizens of Bolivians, of Bolivia. And the interinstitutional work you have seen stems from all these new movements appearing uh, in the state of Bolivia after the appointment of President Luis Arce Catacora. Now, with regards to the comprehensive reparations and the strengthened measures to investigate the crimes, that goes hand in hand with the meetings we are holding to determine the actions and mechanisms we will implement as a government to um, carry out these investigations. Now, with regards to the uh, publicity of the documents of the Truth Commission, they are at the library of the Legislative Assembly where anyone can go and ask for them. That's the mechanism in the library. Nevertheless, as was previously reported, the uh, state's prosecution has presented a bill to systematize based to systematize it based on an informatic system in order to have it online. So the entire population can access this as well as uh, researchers and people who work in justice and um, lawyers and the public in general. So let's hope this project is passed so uh, we can uh, very soon show results to the America, so to the Inter-American Commission in order to publish the results and the findings of the Truth Commission. Now, in reply to the questions and your questions and recommendations, I will give the floor to Ms. Fajardo. But first of all, I would like to state that with regards to the in loco visit, it's not up to the state. Um, there's a proceeding for that that must be complied with. And of course, that goes through the Ministry for Foreign Relations. Now I will give the floor to Ms. Fajardo so she can add more information on the state's behalf. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to greet the commissioners and also the representatives of the civil society. I will speak about some of the questions from the commission, specifically about the declassification of files. As we said, Article 7 in the law of the creation of the Truth Commission uh, mentioned the possibility of declassifying files. According to the final report of the commission, they managed to access the uh, Department of Intelligence of the Army. And also a group of investigators was able to recover valuable information that the state could consider the identification of the modus operandi of the dictatorship. For example, we have a list of victims and uh, their offenders 
And that's how we were able to reconstruct this modus operandi. We were also able to access the files of the Ministry for Defense and the Ministry for Foreign Relations. Also, the uh, system, uh, we, we also access the system of agents and all that information appears on the Truths Commission's final report that as Ms. Gustillo says, is at the file or the archive of the um, General Assembly, can, which can be accessed by, by any citizen. And the public prosecution has also developed a project to digitalize it. We do know that the declassification of files is a very complex activity that, uh, and that has been the case, not only in Bolivia, but in uh, all the countries in Latin America under the Plan Condor. Also, with regards to access to information, it's equally important to point out that our state has a wide policy of access to public information. We also have a vice ministry for transparency. We have uh, mechanisms for public accountability. We have uh, very innovative uh, regulations with regards to that. And as the lawyer of the representative stated, we also have a regulational proposal that was drafted by the Ministry for Transparency. Now, with regards to the criminal proceedings, the Commission for Truth has quoted as a recommendation with names and last names and the uh, status of the proceeding, recommendations to follow up on these processes and after these institutional meetings, we mentioned in our exposition, the Ministry for Justice, after the, based on the work of the CEPRE, has fostered some of the cases, like in the case of Felix Meragantelo, Marcelo Quiroga, Santa Cruz, and Jose Luis Trujillo Orosa. I'm saying this because the state knows that it still needs to boost these processes so that these proceedings will be um, concluded. And that's what this institution is doing. Now, we would also like to say with regards to the consultation, and we would like to acknowledge what Ms. Esmeralda said about the assessment of the state on the nine years of the tense. The state has respected this activity from the organizations. It's important to um, express two issues that are a bit complex. The first one is that as was presented on the Ministry for Justice's report and as was acknowledged by the representatives, there has, we have had a dialogue with the victim. There is no investigation here, I'm, I'm sorry but the state is, thank you, yes. Go on. Thank you. As I was saying, this is quite complex and the commissioners should know about this because the ministry has told us that this dialogue has identified three groups of victims with different demands. One of them are the ones who are symbolically in these tents in front of the Ministry for Justice, but there are others asking, for example, for those who were qualified as victims, but that uh, call for a comprehensive reparation, but who have been beneficiaries. There's another group of people who have qualified after the process of review of the of law 2640, but that they are asking for a new process of qualifica qualification. And then there's people who did not file their request and are asking to reopen the process. So these three groups, uh, leads to a complex situation, as the organizations know. This is why this dialogue and these meetings that we are holding, of course, take their time. And as well, uh, of course, the, uh, the, our institutions are willing to collaborate here. Another factor that should be taken into account, especially with regards to the drafting of the report of the Truth Commission, is 
the uh, interruption of the rule of law after the inconstitutional uh, government in 2019. We restored democracy in 2020. And obviously with our new president, a new president knows that um, everyone that access to information is a right. So everyone should have a right to access this report. Please, I would like to ask the representatives to the civil society to uh, not, not to interrupt, please. Thank you. Now, that's why now, thanks to the return of the democracy, we will now be able to uh, go on with this process and follow up on it. Now, with regards to comprehensive reparations, I would just like to say again that the Truth Commission recommended the state to design a comprehensive policy of satisfaction and reparation, and that after a resolution from April 2021, by the Ministry for Justice. Uh, this uh, process to follow up on the recommendation has been going on. The recommendations of the uh, Truth Commission's um, report lead to uh, specific suggestions and then gener uh, 50 general recommendations and 19 specific recommendations. So far, the ministry has told us that it's trying to identify and develop which uh, are the competent institutions to um, monitor each of them. And finally, I would like to say that the development of the work carried out by the Truth Commission is under the principles and parameters that the Commission for Inter-American Commission for Human Rights established in its document, the right to truth in the Americas, all the principles with regards to the um, makeup and the minimum standards of the law and the follow-up was based on these standards. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. And we are about to wrap up. Before that, I would like to ask Commissioner Piovesan, as the Rapporteur for Bolivia, would you like to add anything? No? Okay. Okay, first of all, thank you. I would like to thank the representatives of the civil society and the representatives of the state for all the information they have provided. I would like to uh, mention again several uh, topics I think that are very important. The first one is the publication of the report. One of the standards the state mentioned with regards to the truth commissions is that they need to be public. And when we talk about their being public, we're not saying that access should be available for every, anyone, but the actual, the entire society can learn about the findings of the commission, that the entire society can learn about these patterns of human rights violations, especially because the warranty of non-repetition is for the entire society to know. It's not up to the society to go and find the information. The state needs to make it available for everyone. I understand that uh, it is available for everyone, but I would like to uh, insist the state should take measures so that anyone in Bolivia, anywhere in Bolivia can access that information. And that takes active measures. And it's very important as a warranty for non-repetition for the entire Bolivian society to be aware of what happened. Apart from the decision with regards to the individual testimonies, we are talking about the findings and the patterns detected by the Truth Commission and that the entire society and the entire uh, public official, all of the public officials should know about this. It's very important for the warranty of non-repetition. That's why I insist on this. And I think this, this takes more activity by the state. Secondly, with regards to the participation of the victims, which is another fundamental standard when we talk about truth and justice and memory. And this applies to uh, non-repetition, to reparations, and the representative of state mentioned dialogue. When we talk about the participation of the victims, I understand that there are many victims and that they all have different demands, but the state has an obligation to open spaces for participation for all the victims, regardless of their political opinion of their uh, different demands. The victims are not an homogeneous group. 
nor are there demands. It's important for the state to open those spaces for dialogue. And as rapporteurs for memory, truth, and justice, we believe we see that the group of victims that are here, probably some others don't, but there is a group here that are not happy about this process, who feel they are not being heard. And I would like the state to call uh, to hear from all the victims, regardless of their visions about the political processes in the past few years. They are all victims of the dictatorship and they all need to be heard. So this is very important. The state mentioned dialogue. The dialogue needs to be with everyone. No one can be left behind, especially when we're talking about serious violations to human rights. Now, with regards to reparations, I am very glad to listen that you are working on a comprehensive plan for reparations. Uh, of course, I understand there might be many demands for the state of Bolivia. I understand the context of the pandemic. These are victims of the dictatorship. Um, many years have gone by, the victims are getting older, so the processes, uh, sorry, the timing period is not the same for the state as for the victims. So this is happening in many countries. Victims are starting to die because they grow old and they never get their demands for truth and justice uh, satisfied. I understand the context of the pandemic, but I would like the effort to speed up that plan the representatives of the state mentioned. Now, with regards to some petitions mentioned by the representatives of the civil society, we took down, we wrote down your um, petitions, the team of the executive secretariat in the system for cases and petitions is here. And I'm sure that along with the country rapporteur, they will go over your petitions. And finally, about the in loco visit. The in loco visit was agreed upon with the Bolivian state, but it was postponed because of the pandemic. And that is something that unfortunately is not up to us. We hope that with the access to the vaccines, which is becoming more and more universal, we can finally carry out that in loco visit, but that will depend not only on the commission's duty to care for the health of the commissioners and its team, but also to um, care for the health of the people we'll be meeting in Bolivia. So, I mean, the end of the day, that's what we need to safeguard. That's why it is impossible to give you a date, but there is an agreement for an in loco visit once the health conditions are there. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this hearing. Thank you. I would like to thank the victims and also the representatives of the civil society, Mr. Albarracin. Thank you all for giving a voice to the victims. And also I would like to greet the state for all the information it has provided. And we will continue to follow up on this situation. As usual, our commission is at your disposal, both the disposal of the uh, civil society and the state to support, to provide support in our um, technical coordination. The country rapporteur is here. I am the rapporteur for memory, truth, and justice, and of the other commissioners as well. Thank you all. And well, we will now close this hearing. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you.